So, this is the second part to the review of the Ancient Classic. Hello, fellow plot questers. It is I, Aaron the Plot Quester, and today we got the Odyssey by Homer himself as well. Let's get right on to it. So, basically, today I want to talk about the second part of the book, but it's going to be really, really short, and then I'm going to talk about the overall themes and symbolism and whatnot that an English major needs to know within the book. Let's get right into it. So, first off, the second part of the book, also known as the Book of the Dead. Basically, Odysseus, Odysseus goes to the House of Hades, or the Necromantion, and there he meets a bunch of ghosts of Her Heracles and a bunch of other ghosts, and he learns about some bad crap that he has to go through in order to go back, and also some things he should avoid in order to go back. Then he goes over back to Kirk, and Kirk is super nice to him, and she she lets him live, basically. And Odysseus now has to go through these really dangerous waters where a bunch of sea monsters, the Caribides, and I think there's another one. The, the, one, with, the one with a lot of tentacles and the one who sucks in water. The, those two ones, with the clefts. I, I genuinely don't remember the other guy's name. Too bad. And... Odysseus manages to survive with minor casualties, and finally he's through, and he lands for a little break on literally next to Polo's herd. Now, uh, or, now of course, Odysseus is like, okay, Prophet Dead Guy told me that if we eat one of these guys, Apollo and Hyperion and whoever owns this herd, the mortals will get mad at us and Zeus will kill us, so we need to chill out and not eat anything. Not eat, uh, not eat the cows. At first, the, the, the men were like, okay. Then they were like, wait a minute. If I build a shrine for the god who owns these things, can we eat them? Yeah, probably. Uh, no, not probably. And they killed a bunch of them, killed them, ate them, and feasted for like four days. And they hopped on a boat. Thunderbolt, boom, bang, dead. Except Odysseus, who ended up on Calypso's Island. And that sort of goes back to the start of the book, yeah. And then Odysseus obviously escapes from Calypso's island and gets to the Pagans? Pe I have no idea how to pronounce that. Anyway, friendly nation people who hear out a story about this crap as, as it is shown in, you know, part, part one of, of this video. And yeah, so the Pagans now are sending him back home. And the rest of the book is about Odysseus, Odysseus railing the suitors with his bow and arrow and Biggie's big return with Penelope and all that. But however, I'm not really going to go into specifics of that because literally everyone knows about, you know, shooting through the 12 axes, Odysseus' bow, the marriage bed. I want to talk about that symbolism, that those themes, and all that crap. So let's get right on to it. So, literally, probably the biggest theme that is here is, you know, cause and effect of good and bad. That is one of the biggest themes that keep keep coming back because you know when Odysseus does good stuff like help people or persevere he's always given a reward for example you know hospitality literally everyone's hospital to him that's actually another theme but I'm not gonna talk about it really specifically and yeah so when he does bad stuff like killing holy cows instant lightning bolt owned auto GG yeah so basically do good stuff don't do bad stuff it's good for you. It's good for your health. You don't want to die, do you? And yeah, that is a really, really major theme. And also another one of the major themes is probably his home. And there's a lot of different symbolism within his home. So his home, Ithaca, basically represents his goal, his final destination. You know, at the end of the hero's journey, there needs to be some big thing, right? Like treasure or 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 some some sort of girl, I don't know some sort of saving the world sort of thing, you know? Those sort of things have to be at the end. And for Odysseus, that is his home, Ithaca, coming back and becoming king once more. And that is a really, really big part because his motivation and drive all comes from that place, and it's hilarious. Now, some of the things that uh, symbolize this stuff, for example, as a bow, yeah, everyone probably heard of this story, but basically, Odysseus proves to proves to everyone that he's Odysseus by two ways. The first way is the bow. No one can string the stupid bow, but he literally strings it and shoots it to 12 different axes. GG. He's Odysseus. And he, he also, you know, completely destroys everyone. Um, with his bow and sword, with his son. 
and that's pretty cool. And this pretty much symbolizes, I believe, his superiority to all of the other young suitors and people who wants to marry Penelope and become king because, you know, he's Odysseus. He's different than all of these noobs. He is the king, and he's the rightful king, and he's superior, and powerful, and witty, and smart. So, I feel like that, that symbolizes that. Another thing is, of course, I, as I told you, the marriage bed. Basically, it serves as the DNA check for Odysseus to, for Penelope to know what Odysseus, if it is Odysseus. So basically, Penelope goes, Come, Eucralia, move the great bed outside of the bedroom. You see, the bed is actually built on olive trunks as its posts, so it, it can't be moved, and Odysseus, who built it, is the only one who knows about it. And obviously, he's terrified, and he's like, what the heck, why would you move the bed? It's like, immovable, what do you mean, you're gonna get an accent here or something? And Penelope finally realizes, Odysseus is Odysseus, and they rejoice. And it's, it's a great thing. And I believe that this represents, this is pretty much the most obvious thing, but I believe it represents Penelope and Odysseus's unmoving love for each other. Like, Odysseus, he was tempted and seduced by a goddess for seven years. I would not be able to hold that long. A goddess for seven years who's offering me immortality? Yeah, so I, I wouldn't be able to resist that for a month, bro. Like, actually. But Odysseus literally does that for seven years and gets back to Penelope. Meanwhile, Penelope, for an equally as or longer time, resists the temptation of the different suitors trying to court her and holds up until Odysseus comes in and mows through all the suitors and takes her back. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So this is just really, really, really great. And that is the final symbolism that I'm going to talk about. There's a bunch of others, like the stupid tapestry and the sea and all that stuff. But I don't really want to talk about all those because I don't think they're as important as the ones that I talked about. Slash, they're, they're the most obvious ones that everyone talks about in textbooks, so I don't really want to talk about them. But that, that, those are pretty much it. That is my analysis. And of course, it's not a real, big, proper analysis. Like, I have an essay for that. But, you know, this, this is just a little thing where you can get a rough grasp of the idea of what is this plot and the Odyssey's plot, and also a bunch of symbolism and themes that are inside it. So, that's pretty much it for today. Like always, your plot poster, Aaron the plot poster, have a great day. Read the Odyssey, read the Iliad, two great classics. Yo, Shakespeare, these books are like thousands of years old, and they are still good. Your books, they're like two centuries old. I mean, a couple of centuries old. And then and, and, and they're boring as heck, bro. What? You're so bad. You're so bad. And yeah, Shakespeare fans can roast me in the comments, but do those exist? Dun dun. Anyways, have a great day, guys, and goodbye. Odyssey.